Hello all and welcome to another smart service tutorial. My name is Nori and today we're going to be taking a look at how to set up and manage iFleet devices. In this video we're going to cover setting up new devices, replacing lost or stolen devices, switching a device to a new user, enabling GPS tracking, and how to follow GPS tracks. iFleet can be installed on Android and iOS devices which meet our minimum system requirements. You can find a list of those minimum system requirements in the video description or on our Quick Start Guide article. To get started, you must have your device set up and ready to go for general usage. This means creating an account for the device outside of iFleet and getting your email set up on the device. Once your phone or tablet is ready to go, we can continue with the iFleet portion of this video. Head over to the respective app store for your operating system and search for iFleet. You're looking for an app with an orange icon just like the one displayed in your screen now. For Android, the application will be called iFleet for Smart Service. For iOS users, the application will be called iFleet 4, as in the number, for Smart Service. Go ahead and download the app. Once the download is finished, open the app, accept the permission request, and tap the Already a Customer Tap Here option at the bottom of your screen. Once inside the app, you can expand the hamburger menu at the top of the screen. For Android users, this will be at the top left-hand corner of the screen. For iOS users, the top right. Towards the bottom of the list, you will see an option for Settings. Go ahead and tap there. Inside of Settings, you'll see an option that says Email Device Identifier. This option should open up your default email application. If it does not, you do not have an email account set up on your device yet. The purpose of this device identifier is to identify your specific download of iFleet and allow Smart Service to send information to the correct device. For that purpose, we must insert this code into your Smart Service database. To achieve that, we will use the email created to email our device ID back to one of the Office users. It will be much easier to copy and paste the ID code from the email into Smart Service, so let's head back to the Office for our next step. Back in Smart Service, expand the menu at the top left and click on the Mobile option, which will open Mobile Workforce. This is your management console for the information coming and going from iFleet. In the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you will see an option that says Set Up Devices. Click on the blue arrow next to this option to bring up the Device Settings menu on the right. First thing we'll want to do is click on the Set Up Devices option on the right hand side of the screen. This will open a smaller menu where you can insert the device ID. Open the email we sent from iFleet on your computer and copy the device ID. Make sure to only copy the device ID and not the space beforehand. Back in Smart Service, paste the device ID in the next available slot. If you weren't able to email your device ID earlier, you can also type your device ID into this box. If typing in the ID, the ID uses only letters A through F and numbers 0 through 9. If the device ID you typed in or pasted is more or less than 40 characters, Smart Service will warn you and remove the device ID. Once the device ID has been successfully entered, click the Close button at the top right of this menu. We have now registered this device ID with your Smart Service database. Our next step is to assign that ID to one of your user profiles. In this screen, each user profile is listed. If you do not see the desired user, contact your system administrator so they can create the new profile. If you still have the device ID copied to your clipboard, paste the ID next to the desired user or select it from the drop-down next to the user's name. Now that the device ID is assigned to both the database and a user, iFleet can begin receiving jobs. Speaking of which, you need to have a job scheduled to your device to fully activate it. If you return to your device now, it will state that it hasn't been set up yet. So before we leave Smart Service, schedule a job for your new device and return to Mobile Workforce. Smart Service will automatically send jobs out to your device every 10 minutes, but you do have the option to manually force jobs to the device inside Mobile Workforce under the iFleet section at the bottom. Speaking of which, this section should always say Primary Test OK in green text. If you see red text here, iFleet has encountered an error or cannot see one of the devices. In this case, please give our client support team a call so we can get your issues resolved. By clicking the blue arrow next to Primary Tests OK, 
take a look at the Last Validation Time box on your screen. This displays the last time the 10 minute trigger was tripped. Depending on when the timer last was set, you can use this to see the last time data was sent to iFleet. To trigger jobs sending to the device, click the Synchronize Now button at the top of the screen. A prompt will appear in the middle of the screen letting you know that data has been sent. Either hit the Enter key on your keyboard or click the OK button on the prompt to dismiss it. Afterwards, click the Refresh button on the left a few times to update this page. Doing this should update the last validation time box, thus confirming our job should become available on our device. I'd like to spend a few seconds explaining how jobs make it to your iFleet device whether the timer is tripped or if you use the Synchronize Now option. Your job information leaves the office and is delivered to Microsoft Azure's cloud servers. The iFleet user must hit their Sync button, which checks the cloud server for new job information. When a job is completed in iFleet, it takes the same path back to your office. This means that iFleet users must sync their device before the beginning of the day and before the beginning of any job provided they have a connection to the internet. In iFleet, the sync button is at the top of the screen, opposite the hamburger menu. By syncing often, iFleet users will always be working with the most recent version of their schedule, which is critical when jobs are canceled or rescheduled. Unfortunately, sometimes devices get broken, lost, or stolen. If this happens to you, you can add your replacement device to smart service without paying for additional licenses. Simply remove the device ID from the user profile and your database via mobile workforce. This will free up a license and allow you to set up a new device in its place. If you've recently lost your device, both Google and Apple offer options to track your device's last known location. If you are logged into Gmail on your device, you can visit google.com slash android slash find. If you were using an iOS device, check out apple.com slash iCloud slash findmyiPhone to locate your device. There are a few extra steps if a device needs to change hands. You never want to remove or reinstall iFleet without syncing your device. The previous user likely has job data that has not been sent back to smart service yet, so to prevent data loss, open iFleet and press the sync button at the top. Back in smart service, enter mobile workforce from the menu at the left side of your screen. By clicking the blue arrow next to primary tests OK, take a look at the last validation time box on your screen. This displays the last time the 10 minute receive trigger was tripped, depending on when the timer was last reset. You can use this to see the last time data was received by smart service. To trigger job data coming back from the device, click the synchronize now button at the top of your screen. A prompt will appear in the middle of your screen letting you know that data is being received. Either hit the enter key on your keyboard or click the OK button on the prompt to dismiss it. Afterwards, click the refresh button to the left a few times to update the rest of the page. Doing this should update the last validation time box, thus confirming that our job data has been sent back from our devices. Make absolutely sure that this box here says queue process loop exited successfully before continuing with the next step. If it does not, wait about 30 seconds and click the Synchronize Now and Refresh buttons again. Next, visit the Setup Devices screen by clicking this blue arrow. Find the previous user in the list, write down the last five digits of that ID and remove the device ID from next to their name. Afterwards, open this Setup Devices window on the right and click the Delete key where the previous user's ID was. Make sure to remove the correct number as these numbers were stored in the order they were originally entered. Lastly, you can remove and reinstall iFleet for the new user. This will produce a new, unique ID that can be then entered for that user. Before we get started with GPS breadcrumb tracking in iFleet, there are a few items I would like to discuss. First, iFleet can send GPS breadcrumbs back to the office when a user syncs their device and also every five minutes while the app is open on the device. GPS tracking with iFleet is meant to deliver an approximation of the device and cannot be set to track the device when the app is closed or if the device is powered off. The first step is to verify that both your device and iFleet have access to your location. The placement of the following settings can vary between operating systems and system versions. I will demonstrate where these settings can currently be found first in Android version 9 and secondly in iOS version 12. Open the settings gear on your device from within your applications list. From there, search for the Apps and Notifications section. 
Tap See All Apps to open your installed applications list and scroll until you find iFleet. Tap to open iFleet, and then tap on Permissions from the list of options. There are several permissions you can enable for iFleet, but for GPS breadcrumb tracking, we must enable the Location permission. If you'd like to also enable GPS tracking every five minutes, open the iFleet app and take a look at your settings menu. Make sure the Auto Send GPS data box is checked. This will allow iFleet to send those breadcrumbs back to Smart Service provided you have an internet connection and the app is open. For iOS users, you have similar permissions in different places. Open your device's settings and find the Privacy option. Tap on this option to access Location Services. Make sure Location Services is enabled at the top of your screen and that iFleet is set to While Using. To enable your GPS breadcrumb tracks, choose iFleet from your list of apps and make sure that Auto Send GPS data is set to Yes. If you've enabled GPS breadcrumb tracking on your version of iFleet, you should start to see GPS tracks return to Smart Service in about 10 minutes. If we head back over to Mobile Workforce, you have two options when it comes to viewing GPS data. At the top of your screen, you have an option called View the Location of My Mobile Workforce. When clicked, this will open a browser tab and display the last GPS track received by Smart Service for each iFleet device. Halfway down the screen on the left-hand side, you have another option called View Daily Summary, which will display all GPS tracks stored within Smart Service on a per-day and per-user basis. Use the date selection at the top right-hand corner of the screen to select the date, then click the GPS tracks number next to each user you wish to view. If the user in question does not have GPS tracks, their permissions are incorrect or they did not use iFleet on that day. Once again, clicking those GPS tracks will open another browser window that will display the user's GPS data. If the device was in one place for a while, you might see a cluster of tracks like the one displayed on the screen now. You can zoom in or click on this cluster to see each track individually. If you have any questions about using iFleet, please visit us at www.smartservice.com forward slash knowledge base for more information on iFleet usage and troubleshooting. You can also reach out to our client support specialists at 888-518-0818. We look forward to speaking with you. Yeah.